Okay guys, so I'm sharing with you a very weird video. This is a video that is speaking about um, this paper I write for um, or wrote last in spring semester for English class. I'm in college, by the way, if you guys don't know. So this is the name of the topic, Disenchanting the Courteous Ethnicity in Self-Discovery and Overcoming Obstacles. Um, so basically I read this part already, but I'll read it again as fast as I can just to keep this video, you know, really short. I'm sorry the glare of the flashlight is like showing, but I can't do anything about it. Everyone has obstacles to overcome to become their ultimate selves. Most times, if not always, one might have to jump bigger mountains than others to get there. And despite the fact that there is no certain certainty, certain, you know what the word is, of change, when embarking upon a journey or finding oneself, some have managed to overcome these barriers. Although self-discovery may sound trivial, it has great impact, impact on the person and their well-being. The works chosen show the characters and their valor to gain more familiarity about themselves. This distinctive this is distinctive because though others may claim that they can reach you know what, you guys can see it. Um, it's six pages. I didn't want to read all of it. But I think it might switch the camera around and show me reading it. I don't know. Seems like it might make sense. Um and I'm, I apologize right now. Actually, I'm not going to apologize. I read that I should stop apologizing for being who I am. So I'm not going to apologize. I'm just going to say um, I look bad right now. I'm not wearing makeup. I'm kind of oily. My face is oily. My hair is oily. It's just who I am right now. So, watch me read. So, um... Where was I? The poem Despair by H.P. Lovecraft executes the theme perfectly by showing how the protagonist was embarking upon a journey to find himself. The quote established from the literary works brings the torment of half-knowing, dimly rushing, and blindly going, shows the character describing how it felt when going into something unusual. This relates back to everyone and their system of dealing with the unknown obstacles. The second poem called A Dialogue with Self and Soul by William Butler Yeats delves into a similar angst of jumping obstacles only this man looks on the brighter side. He looks through the tresses of dark terrain to see the open route, where everything is like new. He goes to say, I am content to follow to its source every intent in action or in thought. This serves as a transcription of the character whose quest to transform their desiccated lives into a more thriving being. Thirdly, The Witch of Portobello by Paulo Coelho, a favorite author amongst Coelho books. A favorite amongst Coelho books, including the famous alchemist, shows the true remaining of letting go inhibitions and transgressing into a world where you know nothing. It is the time where you acquire illumination. The following quote from the book, Athena brought to the surface the immensely rich world we all carry in our souls. Without realizing that people aren't ready to, yet ready to accept their own powers, the martyr finds her way to self-knowledge through pain, surrender, and suffering. The book says the martyr, meaning the protagonist, believes that she is a sacrifice that is needed, that needed to be experienced to gain the self-enlightenment she wanted. She believes, like many others, that to achieve the state of clarification, she would have to sacrifice herself and her beliefs. Another quote explains that another type of character, the virgin, in a non-sexual way, searches for her complete independence and everything she learns is the fruit of her ability to face challenges alone. The final literature is Shadow Over Innsmouth by H.P. Lovecraft. In this novel, the protagonist, a wandering teen, goes to town in Massachusetts to embark upon a life, embark upon a life journey to understand what it is that makes him interested in the horrors of life. After his journey, the main character, Dan, is able to put together pieces and see that the gruesome quest and his life interconnect, furthering his self-knowledge. The idea of self-discovery ruminates the mind as often as one babes, whether it is that one is trying to find Anne or many ancestors, to even becoming Buddhist as a way of cleaning the mind of toxicity. Many characters in the literary works chosen have gone above and beyond to find themselves. In Shadow Over Instance by H.P. Lovecraft, a fictional story about digging into curiosity, curiosity until it festers and turns into a truer and newer distinctiveness. 
the character unknowingly to the situation would wouldn't have been able to dig up information on his family had it not been the weary travel he had departed into the decomposing town of Innsmouth. Wanting to step out of a habitual meander, a brash decision less the pro uh, a brash decision led the protagonist to his introspection. Stated in the novel was the quote, not the reality of what I have been through was highly uncertain in my mind, but I felt that something hideous lay in the background. It seemed that a maternal uncle of mine had been there many years before on a quest much like my own. In this quote, a glimpse of how the protagonist's journey to satisfy his curiosity led him to find that others had voyaged a similar expedition as he had. Some failed and some lived to tell the, to the tales. The quote helps to convey the thought that by overcoming one's insecurities and other means, they will eventually be able to reach a state of metamorphosis or self-knowledge. Probing into the belief that one can achieve self-metamorphosis and if and only after hurtling through hindrances, as mentioned before, the poem Despair by H.P. Lovecraft extends into the common theme displayed when all literary works use following quote, ghastly shades of bygone gladness, clawing fiends of future sadness, mingled in the clown of man this ever on the soul to lie. This line is an anomalous rhyme scheme spoke by the character, a man who threads into the dark path to change it describes it very anxiously, saying while going in onto the journey he would have the urge to gyre tenaciously wanting to retract from his quest. He claims that the hefty weight of wanting to change was the obstacle he had to face in becoming his definite being. He described it as going through a cloud of madness, an article called Know Thyself, How Mindfulness Can Improve Self Knowledge, said mindfulness, a technique often recognized for its positive effects on mental health involves paying attention to your current experiences, example, thoughts, feelings, and observing it in a non-judgmental manner. In a roundabout way, they explain that through observation, one can overcome the major barriers to reveal themselves. They also state that by voyaging on a quest of self-discovery can help their metaphor, metal, mental cognizance. A Dialogue of Self and Soul, written by but William Butler Yeats, a much more deific literary piece that asphyxiates on the travel to an enlightened individual by lobing various imageries about living, living blind and also ditching the impure. In the poem, the protagonist is threading through a space that seems to be septic with imagery of disdain of life, knowledge and death. The following quote stated, Myself, a living man, is blind, ditches the impure. What matter if I live it all once more? The, the unfinished man and his pain, I am content to live it all again. Or into the most fecund ditch of all, I am content to follow to its source. The quote connected that, similar to the character from the poem Despair, he also was intent on following the quest throughout to achieve his nirvana. The final literary work, The Witch of Portobello by Colo Paulo Coelho, seemed to, be, seemed to embrace the entire project theme. The main character, Shireen Khalil, or Athena as everyone else call her. She harvests the power of helping people on their quest of self-knowledge and self-discovery. She was a woman who couldn't understand the way of her world and ached for the person she knew she could be. The ensuing quote, people learn 25% from their teacher, 25% from listening to themselves, and 25% from their friends, and another 25 from time, said by Athena was derivative of the lay motif that pronounces teachings of self-enlightenment. She was trying to convey that things aren't always taught to us by teachers and that it leaves space to venture into unknown to educate. For Athena, dancing was her way of reaching enlightenment. She claims, do you know what I've learned? that although ecstasy is the ability to stand outside oneself and dance is a way of rising up into space of discovering new dimensions while still remaining in touch with your own body when you dance the spiritual world and the real world manage to coexist happily and during any dance to which we surrender with joy the brain loses its controlling power and the heart takes up to the reins of body only that at that moment does the vertex appear with this quote, Athena mentions the vertex, better known as the summit for, transform transform for transformation. Similar to Darwinism, the belief that belief in or advocacy of Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. 
Athena engendered the thought that one could also change their spiritual selves. She believed that after enlightenment, the perception of reality became less rigid, also becoming an appeased individual. Despair shadowed them in smoke, a dialogue of self and soul, and the witch of Portobello, all intertwined with the zealous theme that one has to overcome obstacles no matter the absurdity or the normalcy to eventually reach the state of bliss otherwise known as nirvana or self-enlightenment. The protagonist of each all intently believes that there would be no way of living without satisfying the curiosity that told them they could be further progressed. If you guys like that, let me know because this is this is really cute. I really like it. Besides, it's in my Google Drive, so I can also share it with you guys if you have a Google Drive so you can read it. But this is what I really like doing. I like going back into my Google Drive and seeing stuff I wrote like a couple years ago. And then like reading it again because, you know, it's fun. If I talk too fast in the whole video, I'm sorry. Um, I was trying not to make it long and I think it might be longer than what I thought. But we'll see. Thanks for watching though.